Okay, so here we go. This is the uh, 28 to 70 uh, variable uh, zoom, and this is a uh, 3.5 to 5.6, optically stabilized. This is the kit lens uh, for full frame. So if you get an A7, you would probably get this lens on there. And uh, it's a pretty clean design. It has 55 millimeter front threads. Um, unfortunately, this is nowhere close to being a macro lens. The close focusing that we can get is uh, actually 10 inches um, at 28 millimeter and uh, looks like uh, about a foot and a half at 70 millimeter, so not very close. Uh, it does come with a lens hood. We don't have the lens hood on it today. Uh, we'll see if we need one. So we do actually have some CFL and uh, LED lighting with us today, so we'll be able to go ahead and test the lens fair, and we're gonna take it outside. So let's go check this out. All right, so now we're looking at uh, a standard office light CFL. Uh, we do get a little bit of ghosting, uh, just some white ghosting, but it's very minor. And we're, the lens is wide open right now. And if we go to 28, that's what it looks like. And if we zoom all the way in, that's what it looks like. Um, overall, very good control with the CFL. Now, LED lighting. This is where most lenses have a tendency to blow up. And that is excellent flare control. Much better than the 16 to 50 kit lens that we tested a couple weeks ago. Um, this does really well. Actually, that's really good. And that's zoomed in and out. And it seems to hold up just extremely well. Okay, so let's go outside. All right, so the issues with the variable zoom are when you're wide open like this, it's fine. But when you zoom in in manual mode, it completely gets a stop darker. And then you zoom out, it brightens up again. Now, stabilization wise, go ahead and, and just give me a quick loop. we will give you guys an idea of how well the image stabilization works. You know, realistically, I'm just hand holding the camera, so most likely it's gonna be fine. And let me just get some extra movement in there. Actually, go ahead and walk this way. Let's try a little, a little effect here. See, that gets way too bright. Now, if we go from here, keep going, and then I zoom in. It's a nice effect. Okay. Okay. So this is the image at f 3.5 and at 28 millimeter. And I was focusing in on the bush. And, you know, everything in the foreground seems to be pretty good. Uh, overall, it seems to be decent. No major CAs or anything. Um, our uh, stuff in the background is fairly soft, you know, slightly out of focus. But then again, we are shooting at f3.5, and we were shooting at this bush. So that's about where we should be. Uh, all in all, seems very decent. Okay, so this next one is at, okay, f6.3. Now, f6.3 is going to be closer to the sweet spot of this lens at 28 millimeter. And, you know, overall, it seems like everything is in focus. We got just some minor CAs going on, maybe half a pixel. Uh, the distortion is not too bad, although it looks like our corners are kind of soft. Let's zoom out and check this corner over here. Uh, definitely soft in the foreground. And then let's go up the wall here. Yeah, so it's, it's just pretty soft still through the corners. Okay, so let's skip ahead here to F11. Now, uh, because this lens is full frame, the sweet spot of this is going to be closer to F8. So F11 should be pretty good. And so far... It looks pretty good. Uh, the buildings are nice and sharp. <clears throat> Got a good depth of field. It looks like the uh, uh, far left side is still just a little soft all the way through. But that could be 
an issue with this particular lens by itself. Okay, so let's skip ahead here to f20. f20 is at 28 millimeter is where the usability ends. <laughs> it's just not good. Soft all the way through and uh, I wouldn't even bother with it. Okay, so let's skip ahead here to f22. This is the end of the uh, wide angle spectrum and it's way too soft. It, at this point it actually starts to get um, pixelated because it's so blurry and uh, because it's so soft the sensor can't resolve it and it starts generating noise and that becomes an issue. Okay so let's go ahead here to uh, all right, so this is f4.5 at 50 millimeter, and f4.5 wide open seems to be fairly decent. It's fairly sharp, nothing real crazy here. Uh, let's look at our gr grass here. So this is just in front of the area that we were focusing in, and it is slightly soft. And uh, let me skip ahead here to f9 okay so f9 at 51 millimeter it looks like everything's kind of coming together a little bit uh, 51 millimeter seems to be the sweet spot you know it's in the middle of the zoom range uh, everything looks sharper although right now it's still a little soft uh, the corners seem to be I was hoping they'd be holding together, but it doesn't look like they are. It's just the center of the lens seems to be very sharp. Okay, so let's skip ahead here to this one, which is uh, 46. This is F11. And it looks extremely sharp in the center. Wow, very nice and all of a sudden the sides came together so I'm thinking f11 is a sweet spot at 50 millimeter um, very sharp all the way through a very good clean concise image we have a little bit of softness on our foreground but that's only because our depth of field is not deep enough to resolve that yet so that is good okay so 48 48 is F18. Okay, F18 at 50 millimeter, um, this is actually very usable. It's not super razor sharp. Now we jumped from F11 to F18, so I imagine F16 is going to be very good at 50 millimeter. Uh, we're starting to get a little bit of uh, halo ghosting happening in our white areas, and this is because everything is getting softer. And let me see, the center is still fairly sharp, the corners are okay, foreground is still, seems like it's just out of focus, just a tad bit, but not bad. Yeah, really pretty good at that. All right, so let's see here, we've got two more. Okay, so this is at F22. F22, it starts to fail. Go soft again. Um, not nearly as sharp as it was at f18. Now let's skip ahead one more. This is f29 and unusable. Extremely soft. Ugh. Okay. All right. So let's go all the way in here. Skip ahead to 737. This is f5.6 all the way open at 70 millimeter and. Eh, decently sharp. I mean, it's not bad. You know, one thing I gotta say is, uh, you know, it has a very shallow depth of field too. You can definitely tell that we're in focus on the grass and the bush over here, and pretty much nothing else. The corners look okay. Uh, one thing I can definitely say is this is a kit lens for the full frame, and we used it on the Sony A6000 crop sensor, and that seems to make a lot more sense because. The Sony uh, 16 to 50 OSS uh, variable lens for the Sony A6000 is terrible. Okay, so F30 or sorry, th uh, 738 is F9. 
Okay, so F9. Pretty healthy jump. Uh, Detail-wise, it looks pretty good. Let's look at the corners really quick. Uh, just a little soft in the extreme corners. How's our foreground look over here? Uh, a little soft and... Well, that's not bad. You know, not bad at all. And that's at F9. Uh, the biggest problem is it's not very exciting wide open. So, you know, even though it's a variable lens, you're still going to have to go at least F8 to get something usable out of this. Okay, so we are at 739. And let me see what we got here. This is F14. F14, the detail's good. And it seems to be closer to the sweet spot. To F25. Now we're reaching for it, and this goes flat. So, you know, it, it seems like it's usable up to probably F22, and then after that, it looks like it falls off really bad. So I, I wouldn't even bother with it at this point. Okay, so let's have a quick discussion on distortion. Alright, so here is 70 millimeter distortion turned off. Now we got a pincushion effect as you can see up here in the, uh, if I try to line this up just right here, there you can see that nice gap going along up there. A pincushion effect on this brick wall and then this is with the distortion corrected. And uh, you know that's really not bad from there to there for being you know at 70 millimeter. I think that's actually very good. There's not much pillow effect. Um, pin, uh, push or pinch. Okay, so let's go to 50 millimeter and you know, same thing. Very little distortion. It's not exactly flat field. This is what's like corrected. Still pretty good. Okay, so let's bounce ahead here to 28. And 28 we go the other way. It starts to spherize a little bit. Uh, very minor though. Not nearly as bad as the 16 to 50 kit lens. So there you go if we turn on distortion correction. So I guess the final word is this lens is a decent kit lens for the A6000. It's still going to suck on the full frame cameras, but overall it's not that bad. And you know, for the price, this is probably going to be the cheapest zoom that you can get that will do what you want it to do. Uh, wide open it seems pretty good and don't go past f22 uh, in telephoto or at 50 millimeter and don't go past f18 at f28 okay it's mostly an automatic it's, yeah, automatic. it's really designed for it does have manual okay so exposure this lens sells used here for 399 so just so you know you can get this at tempe camera uh, their website is tempicamera.biz. There you go.